This table build is a lot different than anything else that you'll really see me make. So if you follow me, then you know that I specialize in clear pores. I like doing encapsulations, big and small. And this piece, I have a feeling they went over and watched Cam at Blacktail Studios because the more and more in depth we got into this piece, the more it reminded me of one of his builds. But okay. So first I start out with making a temporary mold. And the reason that I do this is because Though I have an artistic eye, my clients, and I've been doing this a long time, my clients can't always see the vision that I see. This really, really helps them see what I see. It shows them the layout. Yeah, those are my, my, my moving tactics. These slabs are huge and super heavy. I was actually just a few months postpartum. My daughter wasn't even four months old. So yeah, I'm moving this stuff around and doing all this just having a baby three months ago. <laughs> All right, so after they approve the layout, then we're gonna go ahead and make all of our markings. And I always, always, always make my table bigger than what they ask for. And this leaves room for error. You're not even error. You're going to want to square things up. You're gonna wanna get those edges cleaned up after you pour. So always leave a quarter inch to a half inch around the parameter of your piece. I've spoke to a lot of people that have purchased river tables and they're like, it's actually smaller than what I wanted. And that's because whoever they hired to make their piece, they poured at exactly that dimension, not leaving room to clean up your piece after you demold and before you finish, okay? So I talk about tools and tools needed to start an epoxy resin woodworking business. This circular saw that I'm using right here, I actually got for $20 from a pawn shop. I started my business with less than $200 six years ago. I have now scaled that business, but you don't need all of the fancy tools that you see people on TikTok and YouTube and Instagram using. You just don't need them. I tell my customers that take my e-courses and people that follow me to just get started because the reality is, is you're not really going to know if you like this until you get started. And you don't want to go out and buy thousands of dollars worth of tools if this isn't really even something that you enjoy. All right, so this router sled right here is from Stone Coat Countertops. I get the question a lot, why don't I use a planer? I am kind of biased when it comes to a planer. I was raised to believe that a planer is a thickness planer, which it actually is. And yes, you can build a jig to put these slabs on and run them through there, but I don't own a big old cabinet shop and I do everything right here in my shop. And I don't like interacting, I'm autistic and ADHD, so I don't wanna go out and interact if I don't have to, okay? I do have a 20 inch planer and it's a damn nice one, but you get snipe and it's just, if the wood isn't flat on the one side, it's not gonna become flat magically. So I find I get the best results with a router and a planer. And I have a video on that that I will go ahead and link up below. All right, so I own the Makita track saw. This is my first track saw that I've ever owned and I've actually bought it one other time because I think I just ran it through the mud. Like I use the hell out of this thing. It comes with two tracks, right? So you can buy it with the tracks. And the tracks can be connected to be able to run the length of a conference table or a dining table. And it connects with these little, this bar and these hex screws. So you put them together when you need to make the long cuts and then you take them apart when you need to make the short cuts and it comes in really handy. I should have really been wearing my PPE right there. Um, all right, so after everything is cut down to size, I'm going to fit it into the mold and I always get everything approved like 10 times before I take the next steps because the reality is, is a lot of work goes into these pieces. But if this isn't what they're looking for, then I don't wanna go any further. Let's turn around now. So that's why I do a lot of the things that you see me do. Uh, for this piece, I actually put together two of these sheets and I'm putting a sheathing tape over top of it. I use tuck tape, you can use shipping tape. I have a video on what does and does not stick to the resin. 
when I first started on this journey, I couldn't justify buying a $15 roll of tape because, well, I just didn't have it. I was an unpaid intern and I had a newborn. <laughs> like I started my business with a newborn that was in and out of the hospital. So I very much used a shipping tape. Uh, after it started to make sense though, I really did go over to the tuck tape because you can tell a difference. Now because everything weighs what it does, I am going to go ahead and just put the mold down around the wood instead of putting the mold down and then putting the wood inside. All right, so I call this table the black onyx table. This has three different blacks in here, and this is gonna give me the color that the client was looking for. They were very, very specific on their color. And I ended up using two pigment powders and a dye. I think the dye was from Illumilite. It was, it was the dye from Illumilite. All right, so after you get everything sealed up, you're gonna do your pores and pray for the best. And while I wish I was kidding, I'm not. So I do my best to not spring a leak. I think I've had about three, maybe four. Um, I know a lot of people that are getting started. They're like, oh my God, I'm so, I'm so nervous to start with resin because I think I'm going to mess up. And I'm here to tell you that you're going to mess up. I still mess up. I'm six years in. Although I do kind of push, not kind of, I very much push resin to its limits just to see what I can and cannot do. And I feel like this gives me creative freedom because I can do things that other people are scared to do because I have seen success and I have seen those pieces be good when people said that it wouldn't last six months. Um, here I am five years later with pieces that are still looking phenomenal. So I wait about four days and then I go ahead and demold everything. Uh, the resin is a deep pour resin. At the time of this, I used Incredible Solutions, but they got bought out and now became Promise Epoxy and I still use them to this day. I love their casting formula. I do, like I said, clear pours and that is the most consistent results that I get with my clear pores. I'm actually doing a magnet one right now and I work with people's sentimental objects a lot and I just couldn't fathom going into a project not, not knowing that it was going to come out okay using people's items that I cannot replace. So uh, yes, I do product reviews, I've done probably upwards of uh, 20, probably about 20, 30, just trying out different companies and different product. And still after all of that, I am not swaying, but I am open for product reviews. All right, so I had to figure out a way to get this onto this router sled. You won't see me using this a lot just because it's really, really big. Though at the time of the purchase, if anybody else here is ADHD or autistic, I'm not sure which one this falls under, but I obsess over something like I can't live without it. And then I get it and I barely use it. <laughs> so that sled is from Tots Take One Two. And it, they actually were a Europe-based company. I had no idea how to use this thing. Uh, by the end of this piece though, I. I got it down, like I knew exactly what to do, how to keep the line straight, like I figured it out, but this sled is amazing, it is just massive, <laughs> massive. So like I said, right here, this was, I had already flattened both sides and this is towards the end of the piece and I had that thing cut in like butter. So I love this sled. They actually have a spot in Canada now so that way it's easy to get stuff to the US because man, it was hard to get that here. It wasn't hard, it just took a lot because it was one of their first times sending it to the US. So we were figuring things out together. All right, so after I flatten everything down, this is where I go around and I square everything up. I really like the look of the clean edges. I don't like it when the resin dies, like it penetrates into the sides of the wood. Yeah, this is a bad idea. <laughs> I, I swear, I do the most random things and sometimes I'm skeptical of putting them up on video, but hey, here I am, this is me, and this is how I complete a project. So anyways, I don't like when the resin penetrates into the sides of the wood and then it discolors it and then it doesn't 
it's not the same as the rest of the table. So I really like that uniform look. If I'm going to put resin that penetrates into it, it's got to be the same kind. So say if you're doing a tabletop finish, right? That's a quicker curing resin than the deep pour. So if you have deep pour on your surface, it's going to actually penetrate longer and get the wood's going to get darker than if you use a tabletop resin. So if you have those inconsistencies in your piece, and I have seen so many people do it, it's not my job to criticize their work, but I just know that I don't want mine to look like that. So I make sure to square up all my pieces and I make sure to use all of the same resin whenever I'm doing something like this or a finish or anything like that. Flattening, I make sure to get all of that deep pour resin off of the wood so that way I can go in with just the tabletop. So here I am fixing the chip out. There was a lot of chip out on here when I was not knowing how to use that sled. The other side wasn't so bad, but when I first started out, there was a decent amount of chip out, even with the carbide knives. All right, so I went through all of this. I got my Festool router out and I was getting ready to go ahead and put the C channels in, get the bushings and all of those things. <laughs> and I went right back to my Triton router. So this just goes to show that you don't need the fancy tools because I went through all of this right here and then I went to my Triton. I love the Triton router. I highly suggest it. I will put a video. I have, I think, six or seven routers in this shop, and this is my go-to. I have bought it three times. I just, I, I run through it. I use it every single day, and yeah, when I say I bought it three times, like, I got my monies out of it all three times. Like, I'm, I'm on the third one right now. All right, so this jig right here is freaking amazing. It runs on my track. I know that you see people on YouTube, they have to do like all these technical things and all this stuff to get their C channels in and to perfect them, right? Not with this thing. So the Triton router actually has an attachment that you can buy and I will link that up down below as well. And it attaches to the track saw. What? Look at this. Perfect. So after you got in the two longer pieces on the side of the c-channel then you go ahead and you router out you clear out the inside so that way it sits flush with your piece you don't want this sticking out you don't you, it's just messy looking it's it's not even how it's done so clean it out and get that sucker in there like a glove i love jim carrey all right, so now that we have those in i have to make my markings of where i'm going to put my inserts I always use threaded inserts on these pieces. I see some people use screws, but I just feel like you might have to take the legs off. Like, I don't know. It's just not as stable as if you use threaded inserts. So here I am drilling the holes for the threaded inserts, and then I will go ahead and get them in there, and then you'll just attach it with a bolt. I do the same thing for the legs. So when you're attaching these, you want to leave a little bit of wiggle room for the flex of the wood. I'm going to be using a hard oil finish, Rubio Monocoat to be exact. And this is going to slow down and control the rate of moisture that goes in and out of this piece. But wood is going to expand and contract with the different seasons and the different places, you know, it, it just, it, it expands and it contracts no matter what. And it's our job to allow that to happen and not crack your piece or put too much pressure on there. You just, you want to let it flex, but just not too much, right? All right, so I am going ahead. I use 91% isopropyl alcohol, and then we're going to get it on the legs. Oh, look at these legs. These legs were fire. They actually ordered them um, from like Europe or the UK or something like that. I'm based in Michigan. I'm in the US, but they liked these legs and they were super, super sturdy. They were really good legs. I have no idea where they got them from though. All right, so we're going to get these put together. And when you're putting the legs on, take your time, like take your time, measure things out, make sure everything is spaced good. 
I know that in the beginning of my journey, I would always start to rush things at the end, and that was not good. <laughs> like, I just wanted to see my piece done, and then I'd start rushing, and that's when I would make mistakes, and you don't wanna do that. So take your time with everything. Give yourself enough time with your client or for yourself, if you're doing a build for yourself, give yourself enough time to think about things and make mistakes and not have to rush throughout these things. All right, so I'm getting my leg holes drilled. These are for the threaded inserts as well. And then I'm gonna go ahead and inset them. It is the attention to the small details like these that set your work apart from other people. Um, I know a lot of people just use wood screws and things like that, and don't be that guy. All right, so when you're putting your threaded inserts in, you're gonna wanna lube it up. You gotta lube it up. This is going to prevent cracking, and don't force it. Look right here. Go back if you feel it getting too tight, because you are actually threading the wood, right? So if you feel it getting too tight, back it up a little bit, and then go back in, okay? So as you're threading this insert in, you just, it can cause cracking or chipping or any of those things, and you don't wanna do that. I've done it before. Trust me, take your time. If it gets too tight, revert. All right, so clean everything up, and we're gonna get ready for some Rubio Mono Coat. Now, this is a super easy finish to apply. It's just a wipe on and to wipe off. You don't gotta buff it, you don't gotta do any of those things. Now you can, but you don't have to. The main thing that you want to concentrate with this or any other hard oil finish is removing enough of the oil. So I've actually talked to both of the companies, Odie's Oil and Rubio Monocoat, and I asked them like, what is the main thing that people get wrong? And it is leaving too much product on your piece. So it's not gonna cure. This is a two to one. It's actually a three part, to one part um, mix ratio and the accelerator or the activator, it speeds up the drying process. So you can actually handle your piece in 24 hours. I don't, but you can. All right, so here I'm just spreading the oil on with a trowel. It's just an adhesive spreader. It comes with some of the resins that you buy, some of the tabletop resins. I just keep them and I actually have a big old stack of them that I have accumulated over the years. And the ones for the oil, I do keep separately from the ones for the resin because you don't wanna mix those two things. That would be very bad. All right, so before I do the reveal, I am gonna ask if you feel like I earned it please press the like button and the subscribe button. It helps me to continue to do the thing that I love to do, and that is to bring content to you and help you learn. Show them what mommy made? You wanna show them? There she is. Are you guys subscribe, like, and leave a comment? What kind of builds would you guys like to see me do? For the most part, I just record and edit the builds that I do. But is there something specific that you want to see more of or of in general? All right, you guys, thank you for watching. What do you think about this piece? I call her the black onyx.